What's up? This is Mario, and welcome to Awesome Acoustics. In this episode, we will take a look at the relationship between sound frequencies and musical notes, and how to calculate these frequencies in both standard and alternative tuning systems. Before getting into the frequencies and the maths, First, I want to talk a little bit about musical notes, for those who aren't musicians. If you want to skip directly to frequencies, you can find the next section down here in the progress bar. If we look at a piano, we see that there is a repeating pattern in the keys. Specifically, there are groups of two black keys and groups of three black keys. If we take a range from the white keys that surround two black ones to the white keys that surround three black ones, this is the basic group of notes used in music, called octave. You might recognize these as Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, and T. These names are not fixed, but are instead used to name the sequence of notes in any major scale, which I will not explain here. So the names can actually be shifted around. But the fixed names used by musicians whose native language is English are C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. And this group of notes is also known as the C major scale. However, keep in mind that most Latin American and European countries will use Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, and C as the fixed note names. The black keys don't have their own names. Instead, they borrow the name of the white key before or after, adding sharp or flat. Sharp means that it is the black key after a certain note, and flat means that it is the black key before a certain note. For example, this key could be called C sharp, since it is the black key after C, or D flat, since it is the black key before D. So technically, we could say that the black keys have two equivalent names, at least in our modern musical system but musicians usually give preference to one of the two names. The white keys are actually not equally spaced in pitch. To go up in pitch with fixed increments, we also have to go through the black keys. When you include all the notes like this, it's called the chromatic scale, and it would sound like this. The pitch interval between one note and the next closest one, be it a black key or a white key, is called a semitone. An interval of two semitones is known as a whole tone. Returning to the full view of a piano, we again notice the repeating pattern. What happens here is that the same musical notes are repeated as we go up in pitch. So these notes are the same as these other notes, but at the same time they are higher? It's a bit weird to explain, but it's easier to understand if you just listen to it. Each of these octaves is numbered, which helps us distinguish a specific musical note from others that are called the same. For example, this A note is in the fourth octave, so it would be specifically A4. These musical notes would be the same as those produced by other instruments, and they retain the same names. Only, they would be organized differently. For example, these are the musical notes that we would get on different strings and different frets of a guitar, with the strings in standard guitar tuning. Different musical instruments would span different ranges of musical notes. Each musical note is associated with a specific wave frequency. As we will see later, these frequencies are not necessarily fixed, but there is a list of standard frequencies that is used throughout modern Western music. For example, the note A4 typically has a frequency of 440 Hz. That is, if you produce the note A4 in any instrument, the waveform may be different, but the period will be the same, which would be the one that corresponds to a frequency of 440 Hz. Intuitively, one would think that the frequencies increase linearly as we go up in semitone steps. However, this is not the case, but the frequency increment with semitone intervals is exponential. This means that in a low octave, the frequency increment between two notes is very small. Whereas in a high octave, the frequency increment between those same two notes is much larger. 
For example, I'm going to play the C major scale in four consecutive octaves while plotting the frequencies. Here, I am plotting the frequencies on the horizontal axis and amplitude on the vertical axis. Also, notice that the frequency axis is linear. As before, here we could see how the frequency increment between notes became larger in the higher notes. Our perception of pitch versus frequency is logarithmic, just like our perception of loudness versus pressure. That is, what we hear is not the increment in hertz as such, but the frequency ratio relative to other notes. Let's look at some specific examples. If we compare a 300 hertz wave with a 600 hertz wave, we perceive a very clear difference in pitch. Here, the frequency ratio is double, which perceptually is exactly one octave. However, if we compare a 2300 Hz wave with a 2600 Hz wave, we perceive a much smaller difference in pitch, close to a whole tone. This is because, although the difference between the two is also 300 Hz, the frequency ratio is only 1.13. When we combine our logarithmic perception of frequency with an exponential increase in frequency, this results in a linear increase of perception of pitch. This is because logarithms and exponentials are mathematically opposite and cancel each other out. Let's listen to the four octaves example again, but now let's use a logarithmic axis for the frequencies. As we mentioned in the previous video, a logarithmic axis gets compressed as we go up to higher numbers. If you noticed, here the increments seem to keep constant throughout the example. If we think of an audible range from 20 Hz to 20 kHz, this can give the impression that the range from 10 kHz to 20 kHz is almost half of our perception, when perceptually it is a small portion. One way to think about our logarithmic perception of frequency is that, to our ears, there is the same amount of information between 100 and 1000 Hz as between 1000 and 10,000 Hz. An interesting property is that any note in any octave is going to have exactly twice the frequency of that same note in the previous octave. This property would only be possible with an exponential increase of frequency. In fact, acoustic engineers use the term octave to refer to a doubling of frequency, even outside of a musical context. This also explains why playing the same note in two octaves at the same time sounds like a single note but brighter. If one note has twice the frequency as another, then it has half the period. When adding both waves, we can see that their cycles fit perfectly. So the new wave will still have the period of the lowest note, and therefore the same frequency and musical note, only it will have a different waveform. This does not happen in the same way if we try to add different notes. The standard frequency of all notes in modern tuning can easily be found on Google. But how are they calculated? Before that, I should give another mathematical reminder, which is multiplications of roots. The square root of a number is a number that we would have to multiply by itself to return to the original number. By the way, notice here that I am using the point as a multiplier. For example, the root of 4 is 2, because 2 times 2, or 2 squared, is 4. The root of 9 is 3, because 3 times 3, or 3 squared, is 9. Seen in another way, the root of 4 times the root of 4 is 4, and the root of 9 times the root of 9 is 9. When we think of it like this, we say that we are cancelling the root. The cube root is the same, except that it would be a number that we have to multiply 3 times. For example, the cube root of 8 is 2, because 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 cubed, is 8.
The small number you see here on the roots indicates how many times we have to multiply the number. The square root shows nothing, but here we imagine that there is an invisible 2. So, we can see that roots and powers are opposite operations. If we raise a root to the same power as the number here, including the invisible 2 for square roots, we effectively cancel the root and get the number that was inside the root. Ok, let's get back to music. In Western tuning systems, there are two things that are basically predetermined. That each octave has 12 semitones, and that the frequency increase when going up a whole octave is twofold. And in modern music, we use a tuning system called equal temperament, which basically means that the interval between a note and its next semitone is always going to be the same regardless of the note. That is, we have to split the factor of 2 into 12 equal parts. If we had a linear system, we would achieve this with divisions and sums. However, an exponential system increases based on multiplications, so we have to use roots. Let's see, we have to find a number that multiplied 12 times gives us 2. Then... Of course, that number would be the 12th root of 2. If we calculate this number, it would be equal to 1.059463. There are more decimal digits, but here I am truncating it. It may look like an awkward number, but the elegant thing is that this number multiplied 12 times gives us exactly 2. Well, that's without truncating decimals. So in equal temperament, to go up from a note to the next semitone, you have to multiply the frequency of the note by the 12th root of 2. And to go down from a note to the previous semitone, you have to divide the frequency of the note by the 12th root of 2. Another unit used to measure note intervals are the cents, which are equal to a hundredth of a semitone. So, 100 cents is a semitone, and 200 cents is two semitones. If the semitone interval is the 12th root of 2, then the cent interval is the 1200th root of 2. To get the cent interval between two frequencies, we can use this formula. For example, the cent interval between 1000 and 1010 Hz is 17.23 cents. Now, we are going to calculate the frequencies of all musical notes. Using equal temperament, we already know that our relative semitone interval is the 12th root of 2. Now, we only need a reference frequency. This is actually arbitrary, but currently, the standard of A4 equals 440 Hz is used. This means that the starting point is to assign that frequency to that musical note, and from it, calculate the rest of the frequencies. The fact that it is a standard does not mean that it is a law. Rather, it is a recommendation to have all musicians aligned to the same frequencies and facilitate collaboration. The procedure of calculating the notes can be done manually, or it can be condensed to this formula. Here, the N is the key number on an 88 key piano, advancing in semitones. For example, A0 would be key number 1, B flat 0 would be key number 2, and so on. A4 is key number 49, so this part of the formula shows that A4 is our reference note. So, to calculate the frequencies of all the musical notes, you would have to solve this formula with many values of n, which for a piano would be from 1 to 88. The formula can also be expressed in this way, which is algebraically equivalent. If you want to tune to another frequency with equal temperament, you simply need to change this number to the desired frequency and change this number if your reference is a note other than A4. To find the key number from the frequency of a note, we can solve this formula. Just keep in mind that if you don't have the exact frequency, the formula will give you a decimal number that will be an approximation to the key number. It is also possible to calculate the frequency of a note based on any other note and the required semitone increments. For example, if we had the frequency of C4, we could find the frequency of F4. The increment is 5 semitones, so we have to multiply the frequency of C4 by the 12th root of 2 5 times. An easier way to write this operation is to multiply the frequency of C4 by the 12th root of 2 raised to the power of 5. To calculate lower note frequencies, we have to perform a division. For example, if we have the frequency of G4 and we want to find C4, 
we would have to divide by the 12th root of 2 7 times. That is, divide by the 12th root of 2 to the power of 7. An alternative way of expressing this operation is to multiply by the 12th root of 2 to the power of minus 7. This is because dividing by a number raised to a power is the same as multiplying by a number to that same power but negative. As I mentioned before, the combination of A4 equals 440 Hz and equal temperament is the current tuning standard. However, there have previously been other tuning systems that define the intervals in a way different to equal temperament. Typically, these tuning systems define intervals with fractions rather than powers of the 12th root of 2, and are known as just intonations. This gives us slightly different frequencies than those of equal temperament, so one system may sound out of tune compared to another. Before continuing, it will be useful to know the names of musical intervals. Basically, they are names for different intervals between two notes, depending on how many semitones one note is above another. For example, the perfect fifth of any note would be the note located 7 semitones above that note. So the perfect fifth of C4 would be G4. Within the group of just intonations, there are many specific tunings, and two examples are 5 limit and Pythagorean tuning. 5 limit basically means that the fractions are formed only with multiples of 2, 3, and 5. If you are a musician, these numbers may seem familiar to you. In harmony studies, musical intervals are also often represented numerically with these proportions. However, this has its origin in just intonation. So when playing in equal temperament, these numbers do not represent the exact frequency ratio, but rather are approximations to equal temperament. Only the octave gives exactly the same frequency ratio. Either way, the numerical representations of musical intervals are still used out of habit. As an example of musical intervals, the major third of C4 is E4. So to calculate E4 from C4 with 5 limit tuning, we multiply the frequency of C4 by 5 over 4. If we do this procedure for all intervals in the 4th octave, these would be the frequencies in 5 limit tuning, based on A4 equals 440 Hz. The ratio of double the frequency per octave is still respected in all of the tuning systems I have talked about. So, to find the frequencies of notes in other octaves, the least confusing way is to simply multiply or divide by 2 as many times as necessary. Pythagorean tuning is based on perfect fifths with a 3 to 2 frequency ratio. That is, you start on an arbitrary note with an arbitrary frequency, and the other frequencies are calculated in steps of 7 semitones, multiplying or dividing by 3 over 2. Also remember that dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by that fraction inverted. If we arrange this sequence of notes in a circle, we obtain the well-known circle of fifths. To find the rest of the notes, again, the easiest way is to take a note in any octave, and find it in other octaves, multiplying or dividing by 2. Something that happens in just intonations that does not happen in equal temperament is that the interval between one note and the next semitone would depend on the actual note. Here, I calculated the frequencies of the fourth octave with Pythagorean tuning, and starting at C4 equals 256 Hz. Then, I can get the interval to the next semitone by dividing the next frequency by the current frequency. Here, we see two numbers that repeat. These two numbers are slightly above and below the semitone interval in equal temperament. Since these numbers were the result of multiplication of fractions, they must also be able to be represented as fractions. In this case, they would be 2187 over 2048 and 256 over 243. I will repeat the process of calculating the frequencies, now starting with D4 equals 288 Hz, which we found earlier. In equal temperament, this would give us the same frequencies for all the notes, but here we see that two frequencies came out different than we expected, specifically C sharp and A flat. 
At the same time, the intervals end up ordered in a different way. Here, we can see differences in the intervals around A flat and C sharp, which are the notes that came out differently. What we can conclude here is that if you have an instrument built for just intonation, you cannot transpose a piece of music to another key, because the intervals would change and the piece of music would sound out of tune in one key compared to playing it in another key. Another problem in Pythagorean tuning is when you try to reach the same note from two different directions, in intervals of fifths. Here, we get these two frequencies for B flat in different octaves. If we move one of them to the octave of the other, we see that there is a small difference. The ratio between these two numbers is known as the Pythagorean comma. More generally, it is the ratio between advancing 12 fifths with ratios of 3 over 2 and 7 octaves with ratios of 2, which should be equivalent, but in Pythagorean tuning, they are not. This is a case where we could get an A sharp and a B flat that are slightly different. Although just intonation tunings were used in the past, equal temperament was eventually adopted for practical reasons, since it allows playing in any key and always maintaining the same intervals, particularly for keyboard instruments. And it also solves problems such as the Pythagorean comma. If you want to experiment with just intonation, remember that there is little point in trying to use just intonation on instruments built for equal temperament, such as a guitar. The frets on a guitar are spaced at equal temperament intervals, so tuning the strings to just intonation will result in a strange mix between the two types of tuning. A guitar designed for just intonation would look something like this. The strange shape of the frets is to take into account the changing intervals of just intonation. As a general conclusion, remember that the musical frequencies in any tuning system will always depend on a reference note, its frequency, and a choice of tuning system. With that, we conclude this episode, and in the next one, we will talk about digital audio. See you soon!